Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. We're going to be doing another Jennifer McGuire technique today, and it's called the Starry Night Sky Stamping with Distress Ink. Although, I decided I didn't want to make a starry night. I am going to make a daytime sky, so I'm going to reverse mine up a little bit. And we are going to be using some flamingos and some water and a little bit of grass for the background. And in the inside, we're going to put this stamp that says, Life is like a walk in the sand. Sometimes you flip and sometimes you flop. I love that because our flamingos are wearing flip-flops and I thought that was adorable. So that's where we're going with it. So let's get started and I'll show you how I plan on doing this. I'm using a, a piece of uh, watercolor paper that's from Ranger and I'm going to be using the, the side that's not textured. You, if you played with watercolor paper, one side is very textured and one side is not. I don't like the textured side so I'm not playing with it today. I am going to stamp my image upside down because I have better results that way. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to be using Versafine Onyx Black Ink. I did not like the container that Versafine Onyx Black Ink came in, so someone told me use one of these custom blend uh, containers from Distress and put your reinker in there, and that's what I did. So this is not Distress Ink. It is, in fact, Onyx Black Versafine Ink. And we're just going to get our flamingos all inked up. And then it should give us enough time to situate everything and get our cardstock, I guess, the way I want it. And I'm going to try and put them a little bit near the bottom, but have enough room that I can kind of play with the, the rest of the images on here. I don't really want to have to do any masking, but I might have to mask the flip-flop area, which wouldn't be that much fun to cut out, but I'm willing to do it. Take it for the team. Hopefully. Oh, perfect. Just what I wanted. Um, because of those dots, I mean, it looks like they're already in sand. What to do? I think I'm going to have to do a mask. Okay. So if you've never done a mask before, I'll show you the easiest way to do one. For me, the easiest way is to buy this kind of masking. It's um, it's actually just long paper from, jeez, uh, I forgot the name, Post-it note. It's Post-it note paper. And you want to make sure the sticky part of the Post-it note paper is in here and I'm just going to hopefully use the ink that's left because I don't really care about the dots so much as I care about their feet and their legs and you see how I have their feet and their legs in here and I'm going to cut these this image out and I'll be back so I cut my mask out now all you have to do I just did their feet as I said I just want to make sure that their little flip-flops are laying in place and if you don't have enough um, sticky stuff underneath your mask it's not a big deal you can always put a little bit of adhesive like a little I'll show you what I like to do is I just take a little bit of my tape runner and I take and I just put little bits on both end of my Trying to get just a little bit. There we go. You just want to get a little bit on each end so that your shoes or flip flops are all laying where you want them to be. That one's a little bit too low. I don't really care about their legs so much as being in place because I don't plan on stamping up that high, but I am going to be stamping by their feet with this stamp right here. So we got to see. You got to see how the Anyway, so the first thing we're going to do before we do that, though, is I'm going to be using embossing markers, and that's what we're going to be using on our uh, flamingos. So hopefully these are going to stay wet enough 
long enough that we don't have a problem with them. But. See if our embossing powder sticks. I'm gonna still huff on it once. Huffing means just blow on it to get some of your um, the air from your breath to reactivate the colors. <sighs> and if anybody has hot air, it should be me, right? For a second there, I thought he was using white. And I was gonna to start to cry. So crap. Nice job. That really did a nice job of having those colors stay. Beautiful. Let me pull off my mask. I don't want that anymore. You just want to get that extra powder off. Okay, let me heat that and see how that goes. Look how cute our birds are. Aren't they adorable? I think they're so cute. Now I'm not sure what color their legs are, but I'm going to go with their probably like a beige color, even though I have no idea. And I'll probably be putting some other pinks in here too, but I thought for right now I would just use this kind of a, I don't know, we'll call this beigey color. embossing powder on our little okay let me heat this up and I'll be right back okay next step we're going to put our little uh, mask back on our feet I didn't realize that I was I wasn't planning in the right order there. I wanted to make sure my feet were all masked. And then after I did that, then I realized I had to paint them first before I did this next step. Okay, so our next step is we're going to use a few different colors of greens and a little light brown on our, uh, this is like a grassy mound, I'll call it, that's going to be by our birds. So I'm just going to rub the different green markers we just want to make sure whoo we just want to make sure that our colors are all carried over in this Put a little brown in there if you get a little bit if you think you've got a little bit too much of um, of it on your tip you can always just um, like scribble your tip off on a piece of scrap paper so you just take a just take a scrap and make sure you just get the green or the brown or whatever you have on it and you just scribble it off just making sure that our colors are not going to be I'm going to do a little bit of this color I should have done it first but I forgot and I'll have to really make sure I clean that one off there's a lot of green on that one. Okay, get that off. And a little more green. Okay, hopefully we've got everything accounted for now. We don't want to go above those um, masks. We want our green to be, I'm going to put it right there. And we're just going to put a little bit down. I might have 
I might do a second um, area. I like that so far. I'm going to color it up again. I liked how they put... Um, I said brown and I picked up green again. Um, I like how when it showed up the first time that the brown did show. So we'll put another clump right, right there and hopefully I didn't get it above on their legs. Good. Maybe we'll do a little bit more. In the meantime, I think I'm going to heat set. Pull these off. We'll heat set these and hopefully the the um, markers did dry. Sheepers, forget. It's another thing apparently I can't do at the same time is do anything with embossing and talk at the same time. So let's I think I'm going to put just a couple little lines of um, dump this back in a couple little lines of greens and browns into our uh, background just little you know just some just some little streaks of and I can always add more um, embossing because it's going to it will resist where the embossing powder is but it will also pick it up where there's more powder put down. So we want to make sure that we get I just want to make sure we have a few little a few little twigs of you know little spots of I'm, at this point I'm putting some sand around, or at least that's what I'm thinking it looks like. Okay. I'll heat this up and I'll be right back. Okay, so I think the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to put down, we're using distress inks, and I'm just going to use the little cubes and just kind of wipe over the paper with it. And I thought this old paper would be more beige than it is. It looks beige, but it's more green. We're going to have to put a little bit of yellow in it or something to make it a little bit more, I don't know, well, we'll let the grass just... Well, we'll let it go. We don't, what do we care? It's close enough, right? By the time we're done playing with this, it won't be that big a deal anyway. I'm going to put a little bit of sunlight, I think, up in this top corner. Just a little bit. Or more than a little bit. Okay. And then that was mustard seed. And then I'm going to start with a little bit of I want to put some tumble glass I think the the all of this section because we use the embossing powder over it it should well it doesn't really feel like there's embossing powder over it it, it should act as um, a way to, to make sure you don't get any of this blue on your um, our um, flamingos. But somehow I got a little... Oh, that's off my mat. Oh, that's where I got that from. Get that off there. Don't want that. Okay. Put a little bit more blue down in here. Because we want a little water around our, you know, our sand and our flamingos. We're going to put a little water there. I'll take care of that section. 
And now I got a little green over in there, so I guess I'll just keep playing with that blue. And then I'm going to move the blue. I'm going to make the blue with this peacock feathers. I'm going to change it to more of that turquoisey color because our water is going to be more turquoisey as we go. And then I'm going to shade it back to a little bit lighter again. And I'm going to do that with that tumbled glass. I'm doing them, I'm going over, you know, the two colors to blend them together. And then I'm going to try to stay away from that yellow sunlight because we, we're going to get this if we don't. See that yellow there? Get a little bit off there. A little bit more of it in here. I am going to wet this when I'm done. And I'm going to put some of the mica flakes in there. water it down a little bit. I like the way that this came out at the bottom here. I think the I think our flamingos are pretty good. A little bit lighter and a little bit darker and then a little bit lighter and then I've got that sun in the green. Let's see if we can we're just going to put a little bit of this And you want to be far enough away, like I'm about a foot away, and we're going to try and not get huge blobs. Like right here, I have a couple spots I'm not crazy about, but I want to get a spot up at the top in the sun. And Okay. And all right, so we're going to let this dry, and always take some off. Those big dollops of the um, pearl stuff. I'm not crazy about huge dollops. Um, that mica is from uh, an eyeshadow called LA Colors. If you're familiar with um, the Dollar Tree, it's their brand of of uh, eyeshadow uh, and I use the white in it and I just put it in you can either put it in with alcohol or water either one and it works just fine I prefer alcohol I don't know why but I usually use alcohol in mine when I'm doing it so we're gonna let our flamingos um, rest and dry and we'll be back and we'll see how we can finish up this card so my sentiment is stamped and I embossed it with the uh, clear embossing powder that matches the rest of the card. Now I'm going to find a, a punch that I like that will work with our sentiment for on our card. So let me do that and I'll be right back. Our next step is to get our sentiment set up. And I think what I want to do, I, I'm going to put this brown backing behind our pink and uh, I thought what I would do is take the same brown and run a line of this blue through the center of it like that hopefully it's straight and then I'm going to I have this is some of my uh, ATG gun that didn't work so I'm just gonna use the tape that it unrolled off the ATG from the inside out. So now I'm going to just lay this. I'm going to run it across here. Let's see where I want it. Maybe, maybe there. That sounds good. I've got me some ATGs, the little ones. I'm doing a video on what are the best of the minis, and I've bought a bunch of them, but I haven't really even kind of hit the, the surface of how many of those there are. There's so many of them. So 
I just keep buying them and eventually I'm going to be doing the video on them. But just like the wet glue video, there you know, you you have to accumulate a lot of them before you can make any kind of real judgment call on them. So that's where we stand in making progress on that. Okay. Let's see. Do I want to go across that? I think I'm going to cut those at the edge. I probably should have done that first, but eh, I'll fix it now. I'll just cut it there. That looks good. So our two edges are down. Now all I'm going to do is figure out where I want to put... I think I'm going to put my sentiment there. I'm not going to pop anything up on dimensionals. I have a lot of dimension just by virtue of having so many layers of cardstock here. I think that we should be good. I'm going to turn on its side. Easier to see that way. don't know why I didn't do that before. That's better. Okay. Now all we have to do is put it on our card base. Probably thinking I was never going to get to this stage. But I'm going to fold her out. Make sure my card's folded down well. Whoop, upside down. What else is new? This one is cute. It's got little arrows on it. I thought it would look nice with the flamingos and the colors of the water in my... I did the flamingos because I thought it would be nice to have something to remind us that winter is not going to last forever. And I don't know if you're somewhere that's uh, in a cold climate, but it's always nice to have something to look forward to in terms of summer coming someday. And there we have our technique on a starry night sky, uh, sky stamping with distressed ink. Although it's not a starry night, it is a summer night and or summer day. Sorry. Jeez, I don't know what I was talking about there. It is a summer day and it is using all the same techniques. I will obviously, uh, as I have been, link the video that I used as my inspiration for this card to this video. And I hope you enjoy this and I hope you give it a thumbs up. Please tell one person about my channel. I really appreciate it. Thanks so, so much for watching. Bye-bye.